Netflix, big thing, especially on guest Wi-Fi. Um, so this is me. Um, I do things. Um, and I work at an airport. If you don't get that, um, go listen to the Keith's blog, the Wireless Land Professionals blog number 116, and we explain what that means, actually. Um, I do guest Wi-Fi. That's my primary thing. Uh, just a couple months ago, we actually went and did a .1x network. First time in the decades the airport's been open and people thought it was black magic. Um, because everybody uses our guest network. Um, and we always talk about rate limiting. And that, it's a popular thing. And everybody comes to me and they go, yeah, great, Jim, but you have dual 10 gigs. Yeah, I do. I have money. Um, <laughs> what I'm talking about, though, is not the rate limiting on the air. That's been discussed a lot lately. Um, what I'm talking about is rate limiting on the wire. Over the air, don't don't turn off the higher data rates. I think it's been established over the past couple of weeks. It's just really, really bad. Just don't do it. If you only have a 10 megabit per uh, WAN connection due to ISP limitations, I know uh, Lee always comes to me and goes, goes, but I have places where they have DSL, we have satellite. You know, maybe you consider blocking streaming. I got on a flight down here and they said, oh great, you can use the Wi-Fi, but you can't stream Netflix because it's too high bandwidth. You know, so block it. Rate limiting is just a bad idea. So I wanted to kind of go over this. I went through a testing setup. So I got my AP, I got a controller, and I dumped that directly into a PFSense box. I love PFSense. If you don't know much about it, you should go check it out and eventually I'll get around to writing a blog about it. And after my, and this is just kind of give you full visibility of how I set up my test. From there, I went through a Juniper that is being replaced and um, straight out to the internet. So that's how I set up my testing. And what I'm looking at is really what I see at the PFSense. I come off the controller and I got to go somewhere. My guest network, it doesn't go through a firewall. I did not say that. Um, <laughs> customer intent. What is your customer going to do? What is your, you know, we talk clients, but a lot of times you also have to understand it's also the customer, individuals. What do, I, what do I want to do? What does anybody else in this room want to do? What is their intent? The intent of your customer really makes a big difference. You know, we talk about football stadiums, and, and I had a guy come to me and he goes, yeah, my, you know, we do football stadiums all over the place, and the traffic is 80% upstream, uplink, and 10 to 20% downlink. And he goes, and you probably see the same thing. And I go, no, I see the exact opposite, because my customers have a different intent. You don't go to a football stadium to you know, download your movie. And you don't come to an airport you know, to live stream stuff. It just doesn't work. So your intent. So I started to look at downloads because that's kind of what we pay, what we do a lot of. And so I went, hey, let's start my rate limiting. We're going to go no rate limit. Then we're going to go down to 25 and then 10 and then the 2.5. And after a couple minutes of... 30 minutes of, of playing around with this, I realized, hey, it's kind of boring, actually. Um, sure, I can, with no rate limit, I can download a full length, you know, one hour, 45 minute Netflix video in minute 30, minute 40. And as I rate limit, oh, look, it takes me longer. And I went, well, I got bored because, well, it's pretty predictive, you know, no rate limit, lots of rate limit. What ends up happening is I go from a very jagged, quick download to a very steady, constant drain on my network that takes a very long time to download at 2.5 megabits per second. But ooh, I'm rate limited, so I'm not stealing that entire pipe. And predictably, you, know, you end up with bottlenecks. This is another bottleneck that I showed last year. That's five hours right there where we just pegged it for five straight hours bottlenecks are not good. It's very inefficient. It drains the resource of everything. And so here's my gratuitous line graph because I figure every presentation needs one. Um, you can see as we, you know, as you, when you have a really low uh, rate limit, like 2.5 megabits per second there on the left, it takes a long time. And then, oh, look, as I increase my bandwidth that I allow my clients to have, hey, it goes faster. So that was boring. So I said, let me go to streaming. Yeah, that's a big thing. 
You go to a doctor's office, you're bored because you're there an hour. You get there 20 minutes before your appointment. Great. And then they, you sit in the waiting room and then they take you into the back. So you start streaming stuff, right? And so I said, well, let me take a look at what streaming looks like. So this is what we're having here is Netflix streaming from no rate limit down to rate limit at 2.5 megabits per second. And so this is where it really got interesting. And so we're going to drill into this a little bit. This is what it looks like with no rate limiting. You have your basically a setup. Hey, I want to go look at this. I'm going to start downloading. I fill up my buffers and then I sit there and I do nothing because my big bucket on my machine is full. So I'm having video output that's going on my screen and I'm not doing anything. So I'm just waiting. I haven't gotten to that trigger point. And then eventually I go, oh, okay, I need some data. I'm on, I get my stuff, I get off. And I sit there and I do nothing because I'm watching. You know, I'm not watching a video and, and working on my presentation and typing on my blog and checking emails. I'm not doing all at the same time. I'm watching a video. I have one thing that I'm doing. You know, Fernay went through uh, the ECSE with us and said, you know, A1, B2, C3, D4. Do one thing at a time, right? Watch a video. But watch what happens when we start to rate limit it. Okay, let's go 25 megabits per second on an, on an individual client. One client, 25 megabits per second. Have your initial setup, you start streaming. But the gaps start getting a little bit smaller. And there's more spikes as I try to go back to the well. And then I go, ooh, 10. 10 megabits per second rate limit. One client, streaming. This isn't downloading, this is streaming. And so all of a sudden, hey, I'm spending more and more time. I'm spending time, I'm burning time. The one thing we don't have enough of, the one thing we can't manipulate, I can't beam form time. You know, I can't band steer time. Time is time. So we go, oh, but I'm, I really don't like my, my customers. I don't like my patients in my hospital. I don't like any of these people. So I'm gonna go to 2.5 megabits per second rate limit on a stream. This is not a download. This is a streaming test. That's a bottleneck. He spent this upper right graph. That is two minutes of time. They, all he does is just, he is hammering it for two straight minutes saying, I need more data. And it just keeps going. All that that light blue area, that is time, of, that's his demand on the system, on the air, on the wire. And look what happens when we throw in a second client. Two clients, each individually rate limited to 2.5 megabits per second. As soon as I added that second client in, that thing starts hitting 10, gigab or 10 megabits per second. Two 2.5s rate limited does not equal five equals 10 because they keep going back and as you start aggregating and you add three, four, five, 10, 20, a thousand, 5,000, 10,000, it just keeps stacking on top of each other to get to the point where you just, you have to go buy more internet, more internet, more internet because you're trying to punish somebody. And guess what? YouTube, same thing. Same thing happens with YouTube. As you start to rate limit, as you go from no rate limit on the upper left to 2.5 on the lower right, it just continually starts clogging things. It's a bad idea. So in my last minute and a half, I'm gonna talk about some lessons that I've learned about all this stuff. The first lesson came from Peter McKenzie. If you took a CWAP class, you've probably seen this. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> you know, Every client has to go through the DCF, every single client, whether I'm sending a text or whether I'm downloading video. You have to go through this every single time. You want a frame? DCF. Fernay calls it playing the game. You got to go through that every single time. From Joel. Thanks, Joel. This was last year. Half duplex, I say. One client at a time. DCF. One client, yes, he's very adamant about that. A great presentation, by the way, um, very adamant. So you still have all these mechanisms that are already natural to 802.11 that keep your clients in check. They just don't get to run amok 
they still got to play the game. The last thing is from Sam Clements. It depends. Oh, wait. There we go. <laughs> These aren't hard and fast rules. It depends. And I'm done. <laughs>